In this lecture, we're going to discuss the basicity of amines. Recall that an amine contains a lone pair of electrons on the M atom, and that means atoms can act as bronsted bases taking H's away from bronsted acids. So let's begin by looking at the following reaction in which we have two reactants, our amine the base and our acid. So there's a transfer of an H atom between these two reactants and we produce the following two products. We have the conjugate acid of our base, ammonium, and we have the conjugate base of our acid. So, in which way does our equilibrium lie? Is our reaction product favorite or reactant favorite? And how do we know? Well, to answer the question, we have to look at the basicity of our two bases. Our base on the reactant side and our base on the product side. Now, if this base is a stronger base than our conjugate base on the product side, that means our reaction, our base, is more able, is better able to take that H atom away, and so our reaction is product favored. Now, if this base is a stronger base, that means this base is better able to take away that H atom from ammonium, and so our reaction is reactant favored. So, once again, there's a competition between these two bases, between the amine and the conjugate base on the product side. Whichever one is a stronger base wins the H ion. Now, another way to determine the relative strength of this amine is by looking at its conjugate acid. So the stronger this conjugate acid is, the weaker this base is. And the weaker this acid is, this conjugate acid is, the stronger the base is. So, another way to look at it is by looking at the conjugate acid of our amine base. The stronger this conjugate acid is, the weaker our base is. Now, what's one way to determine the strength of this conjugate acid? Well, we can look at the pKa. By examining the pKa of the conjugate acid, we can determine the relative strength of the amine. So, if this has a high pKa, that, that means it's a weak acid, so this is a strong base. And likewise, the opposite is true. So let's look at the following table. In this table, we have the following four amines that increase in the number of alkyl groups attached to the N atom, and these are the respective conjugate acids, and these are their respective pKa's. Notice as we go from 1 to 2 to 3, our pKa increases, so our acidity decreases, and our basicity increases. Now when we go to the last one, it drops from 10.8 to 9.8. So why is that? And in fact, what determines amine basicity strength? So to answer this question, we have to look at two concepts. So 1 and 2. First, let's talk about salvation. So recall that, that salvation is the ability of our solvent to stabilize our products, our charged products in this case. So this reaction occurs in solution. We have a solvent, and the solvent is water. So we have a polar protic solvent. Now, let's take this conjugate acid of this amine and compare it to this conjugate acid here. So let's say that these three R groups are methyl groups. So what happens, what type of stabilizing effect exists between our solvent and these two molecules? So let's look at ammonium. In ammonium, we have four different H atoms attached to our N, and N has a positive charge. So our water molecules, since they are polar, they have partial negative charges on the oxygens. And that means the oxygens will orient themselves to stabilize this positive charge. And so we're going to get hydrogen bonding between this H on our nitrogen, on our ammonium, and the oxygen on the water molecule. So we have, so we have a stabilizing effect, two types of effects, dipole-dipole interactions, and hydrogen bonding. Now, if we look at this molecule, now we don't have as many H molecules. We have our R groups or our methyl groups, and that means we will have less hydrogen bonding between the polar solvent and our 
product molecules. So we're going to have less stabilization of the solvent. So as we go down the group on our conjugate acids, the solvent is less able to stabilize our product because we have left less H atoms attached to our N. So once again, salvation is the process by which the solvent can act to stabilize the charged product. This charged product, ammonium, in this case. The more R groups we have on the nitrogen, the less H bonding we have. So as we go down the group, our uh, product is less stabilized by our solvent. Now let's go to number two. There's another effect that plays a role in stabilizing. Now the alkyl R groups help disperse the positive charge away from the electronegative N atom. Remember, this N atom is electronegative. It's relatively more electronegative than our carbon atom. Now, the alkyl R groups help disperse the positive charge away from the nitrogen, thereby stabilizing the structure. So let's see what that means. Let's look at ammonium and let's look at trimethyl ammonium. So here we have all of these groups, our H groups, and here we have one H group and three methyl groups. Now, what's the difference between this H group and this carbon containing group? Well, carbon has a larger nucleus. It has more protons, so that means it can carry a larger positive charge than can these H atoms because of the fact that they're smaller in radius. So, in ammonium, the small hydrogen atoms cannot hold a lot of positive charge. However, in the trimethyl ammonium, the larger carbon atoms can take some of that positive charge away from the nitrogen, thereby stabilizing it. So once again, nitrogen is relatively electronegative, okay? That means that it doesn't, it doesn't like to have a positive charge. Now, what happens in this trimethyl is that these large or relatively large carbon groups take away some of that charge, disperse that charge, thereby stabilizing it. So, we see that as we go down this group, as we go down, the more of these carbons we have, the more stabilizing it is. But, at the same time, as we go down, the more carbons we have attached to our end, the less likely that our solvent will stabilizing will stabilize our product. So there is this difference in effect. As we go down, this destabilizes it. As we go down, this stabilizes it. And that's exactly why there's this discrepancy between this value and this value, right? As we go down to the last one, our solvent is not able to stabilize our product, but we contain three methyl groups and that means the charge is fully dispersed and that's exactly why the pKa drops from 10.8 to 9.8.